Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Next on the programme, there are calls this morning for children on the poverty line to be offered free meals outside of term time. As the summer holidays begin across the UK, MPs are warning that as many as three million children, three million children could go hungry this summer. Some local councils in deprived areas of Scotland and Wales provide free meals for children outside of school terms, and there are calls for this to be rolled out nationally. In Thanet, in Kent, the charity End Child Poverty claim 34% of children below live below the poverty line. There, we met Mum of Four, Kerry, who didn't want us to use her surname. She's worried about how she'll cope during the holidays. Can you help him, Mummy? Wow, you lot have really came this cheese. I bought this on Friday. Cereal and toast in the morning. How toast for lunch it, it would be again it's basic, so more bread. Cheese and ham, some cucumber for a bit of nourishment, and I know it sounds awful, but um so you've got your crisps, yeah, you've and you've got so we need to get some fruit in, the cheapest fruit, something like apples. Can I, can I have a vanilla milkshake? Vanilla milkshake. Yeah. I'm actually um, registered disabled. I um, am also going through a separation, um, which means a new claim for I I employment support allowance. My housing benefit has been stopped, so um, I am going to hugely struggle in the holidays. At the moment, how much do I have to spend? Um, <laughs> I look at it and I think I actually don't have anything, but. Um, You know, my, my, my shopping bill's got down to about £30 a week. For how many? For five of us, four children and myself. Um, and that's while they're at school. So that will double, that's going to actually double the balance of what I need at the supermarket. For at least £50 a shop, I'm going to need. Are you worried? Yeah, the more I talk about it, I'm petrified, to be honest with you. We're in one of the most deprived areas in the UK. The huge problem we've got around here is the lack of employment. You know, up to half of the children in this area are living in poverty. How are families around here going to cope over the summer? I think it's going to be something that comes up and hits people in the face. It's all happening at the same week as we've got universal credits being, bought, being enrolled into the FANIT area and FANIT postcodes. That is going to be another huge shock. If somebody has to, a family needs to make a fresh claim during the summer holidays, they are going to be facing huge problems. So do you think children around here are going to go hungry over the summer? I can see that happening, yes. I think a lot of people wouldn't want to admit that they can't feed their their children and it's not just families on benefits it will be the the working poor that suffer too but it is just so hard and so gut-wrenching and stressful extra worries put on top of extra worries and this is what we we're seeing so often with so little support for so many what? i need to do one of my shepherd's pies don't i for dinner i really like shepherd's pies with these guys they don't obviously see the the huge, I don't want them to see the panic of how desperate we are for the food. It's not, as some politicians will say, to buy a new widescreen TV. We're not, we're not saving pennies for anything like that. We are saving to buy butter, milk and bread. And it, it is literally as tight as that. Let's talk to Frank Field, a Labour MP who chairs the all-party parliamentary group on hunger. He wants councils to be made responsible for free meals in the school holidays. 
and also Erica Martin is with us. Erica's got two children, an 11-year-old boy and a 10-year-old girl. She lives with a partner who is a carer. She receives income support and tax credits and reckons that after housing costs, she has about £140 a week to live on for her family of four. Uh, welcome, both of you. Erica, I know you get free school meals during, obviously, during term time. What happens during the holidays? Um, well, during the holidays, um, there's an organisation called the St James Centre who offer free meals to anybody. They offer breakfast and they offer lunch. Um, so it takes the strain off most people. Um, and that isn't for anybody, whether they be working or not working. So it's really helpful. Right. And if that wasn't there, if, if St James Centre wasn't there, what would you do in the holidays? Um, just try and spread the meals out as much as I can and work out what how we can sort of eat the best way but it's the same for anybody I think um, it, there's a lot of struggles in the summer holidays with days out and things like that so you need to work it out the best you can yeah let me bring in Frank Field then um, a, a report from a group of MPs earlier this year talked about three million children being hungry during the summer holidays some people won't believe it. They'll say, look, we live in the fifth richest economy in the world. This is Britain. This is 2017. Come on, you can always feed your kids. What do you say to those people? Well, I think they should be sceptical and push MPs when they produce figures like that. But we've had these very long-term changes occurring. At the bottom of the labour market's fallen out. Uh, all the welfare cuts have been on families. Um, pensioners have been protected and pensioners have never been better off as a group than they are now and um, we just heard there about St James's Centre in Birkenhead um, in Birkenhead um, during the school holidays um, voluntary bodies uh, feed uh, 2,000 children and over the last year thanks to largely supplies from his church we've actually provided uh, 200,000 breakfasts for children so it is a topsy-turvy world you would have thought as you say fifth or sixth richest country in the world um, and yet some children go to bed hungry and they get up hungry and take that hunger to school what we're trying to do here is not only make sure during the term time children are well fed but saying to the government you have a duty now to require local authorities to coordinate what we're trying to do in Birkenhead and Feeding Britain's doing in many other places in the country. But also, we're going to be after one in the £10 raised from the sugar tax to finance this. Right, OK, because that was obviously going to be my next question. Local authorities are... They haven't got their, any money. Their, their no, budgets are really, no, really absolutely. stretched. And uh, it's a t it's, again, it's a bit, you know... You, they decide their own priorities. You would argue this is absolutely a priority. And it would be ring-fenced, so they couldn't go and spend it on something else. Mm. I mean, feeding children during the school holidays, when we know um, that f uh, numbers going to food banks goes up. One little girl last summer came to one of our projects, um, and because we always provide fun uh, with the meals, because middle-class kids, thank God, get fun during the holidays, why shouldn't the poorest children get that? She said, look, I'm so hungry, might I come in? I don't mind not having the fun, but might I have the food, please? I mean, it's... How do the you people react to that? Are, Well, it's gut-wrenching, isn't it? Um, and redoubling the efforts, um, not only in Birkenhead, but also making sure that we can actually get that service rolled out over the whole country. Not again for the local authorities to provide, but they have a duty to make sure, like we've done th throughout um, Feeding Britain projects, that we combine local um, voluntary bodies, and that we have been terrific in Birkenhead, are actually given the resources t uh, to make sure that every child um, even though we provide um, 2,000 uh, 2, during the meals during the school holidays, there was that little girl turning up. She hadn't been covered, saying, "Can I come in? I'm hungry." Mm. You will have heard uh, some people say it's because parents can't budget properly. What do you say to that? Um, there are clearly parents who couldn't give a toss, um, and it's ludicrous to deny. Um, and you wonder why the hell they've actually got children. And then there are others who are at their wits' end trying to do their very best by their children who are driven almost mad by the um, difficulties of budgeting, particularly when the government takes your money off by sanction, particularly we're now at, um, at the, almost at the end of this, we hope, at a period of, of welfare cuts for families, where, as I say, pensioners have actually had a good deal 
but those with children have seen their real living standards cut um, and we've got all the evidence one would wish to see before particularly from teachers in schools who've been providing in Birkenhead uh, breakfasts out of their own money now actually signing up for the actual supplies bodies like as I say his church provide so they can actually provide breakfast is free okay. and we're after actually getting the government now to do its duty. Um, I've got a statement from uh, the Department for Work and Pensions which I'll read in just a second. Uh, Loz on Twitter says the true legacy of the crash caused by bankers is three million kids in poverty. They are the victims. And Jackie on Twitter, uh, we are saving for butter, bread and milk. This government is heartless. I'm utterly, utterly ashamed of it. Uh, a spokesperson for the Department for Work and Pensions told us this there are record numbers of people in work and we've doubled free childcare 90 billion pounds is spent supporting people who are out of work disabled or a carer bringing up a family or on a low income frank field thank you very much and uh, erica martin thank you very much for your time as well thank you Pleasure. Thanks.